Talking about Brian and I, the number one landing spot for Zach Lomax. And I, I suggested perhaps... Um, who did I suggest? <laughs> West Tigers, I think. Might have been the West Tigers. Newcastle Knights was an option. Uh, so to the Gold Coast, if you wanted to play halfback. And uh, there was a few other ones there. Fletch suggested the Roosters. Of course. Okay, so that, that, that adds up. Horror. But what I said to him was, though... Penrith accounted for the Roosters pretty well the other day, and it wasn't because they had poor centres. No. It's not the formula, is it, to spend 800 grand for a centre? Let's see whether Trent Robinson agrees. Obviously linked with the Roosters. Is that really? Something? Believe it or not. Believe it or not. Is that something? Have no. you looked at it yet? Or is it no, that's not. Um, we've sort of got the centres that we want. We still need to add a couple of outside backs, um, but not in that price range. So Simply, yeah. You're not going to go after? Yeah, no, we're not. Yeah, and that makes sense. I don't believe you're going to win. If you go through the past grand final winners and their spend on centres, and you even look like a big gun like, you know, Matty Burton and Crichton, they were at the early parts of their contract. They weren't mm. certainly weren't getting the $800,000 a year. And, and that, that to me, you know, the Sharks one with Ricky Latelli and uh, a young Jack, Jack Bird, Bird, you know, that that's kind of the formula, I think. It's mm. a good point. Cowboys back in the day, Kane Linnett was a centre. So I keep thinking when I see the Zach Lomax stuff, I think a winger in today's game is worth more than a centre. Have I, I, You know what? I kind of do as well. But you, mm. you need a gun. I, I think almost the centre position defensively is one of the hardest. Yep. So if you've got a gun defender, you can break it even. You don't need the superstar centre. I don't mm. think you do. So it, let's say we go back to that grand final. So I, I think you should go to Parramatta. Let's say we go back to that grand final, Parramatta against Penrith. Does Zach Lomax in that side make much of a difference? Probably not. No, and th this yeah. is the thing. Like, if you're the Dragons, to me, it's a get-out-of-jail-free card. Like, you shouldn't be spending that on a centre in this day and age, unless they are absolutely cream of the crop elite. Will the Dragons chip in a cent? No. Yeah, no. should they? I'll tell you what needs to happen sooner than later, because this is – I don't mind saying this, and, and, and by all reports, Zach's a wonderful kid – but this noise is stuffing around the Dragons. It's stuffing around their fans. And they've been pretty fair. Like, he's getting what he wants. Squeaky wheel gets the oil. If I was the Dragons, I'd be saying, listen, you know what? We're going to give you what you want. We, we sign in good faith to have you here for the term of the contract. And you don't want to be here. We've done everything. You're playing the best football you've ever played. And you still don't want to be here, right? That's fine. But, Zach, we're coming to the party for you. We need this noise to stop. We can't go the whole year saying, is he going to go there at the end of the year? Yeah. You need to come out for this club and say, okay, I'm grateful that the Dragons have uh, released me from the final couple of years of my contract. I am 100% committed to give my very best for the entirety of this rest of the year. I will not be going to another club in 2024. I will be going in 2025 to start a fresh beginning, but Dragons fans, rest assured, what you've seen from rounds one to four where I'm arguably playing the best football, I endeavour to do that for the rest of the year and there's no need to talk about will I be going to another club and when I announce where I'm signing, whether it's Parramatta or wherever else, the next questions aren't going to be, well, will I be there in round 18? No, I'm committed to the Dragons who, you know, we, we've got some good things happening here and I'm committed to see this out for 2024. The club's been good to me. I've, I'm getting paid $800,000, mm. which is more than what really um, I should be getting paid up into this year and even to this year to justify a winger getting $800,000. He owes that to the club, Missile. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, I agree with you. It's a really good point. He, I think he should even be... You know how often players will say, I'm not making a decision until after the season. Uh, I don't even think we should be, or he should be wasting the Dragons. They're, they're, you, you get a certain amount of airwaves, right, as a team. And all the Dragons now is Zach Lomax. We're not talking about the fact that they just smashed Manly and played really well. All we're talking about is Lomax. So he's actually doing them a disservice, I think. I think he should be coming out and saying, I won't make a decision until after the season. Put it to bed. I'm going to commit, like you said. He owes them at least that minimum, minimum, that courtesy, that that respect, yeah, of, of taking the spotlight off him and and putting it back on on the club and their honestly their success so far this season because I thought they'd be dreadful this season and that's just not been the case. And, and anyone who wants to pay, like as I said, we've spoken about the winning formula. Any club who wants to pay eight hundred thousand dollars for a centre 
right? And, and Zach has played his best football ever on the wing. So we haven't actually seen him play as an $800,000 centre ever to this point, ever. Yeah. So whoever wants to pay $800,000, which Trent Robinson, he's one of the smartest men in the room. He certainly doesn't. He understands what you need to do, a formula to win the competition. You just can't pay that. And it would be, it's a get out of jail free, free card for the Dragons. I've got no doubt about that. Do you think that it's all about playing centre or is it about success? For example, would he be happy to go and play on the wing for the Roosters? Well, he's not going to get anywhere near 800. Like, how he's playing, maybe. Like, what's Brian Tottle getting, for example? Brian yeah, Tottle wouldn't be getting success. 800. No. Wouldn't be getting 800. So I'll ask you this question, Miss Ol. Would you honestly rather spend $800,000, and this kid wouldn't be getting anywhere near this, on Jacob Kiraz or on Zach Lomax? I'm all aboard Kiraz. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, based off consistency, you go for a Kiraz. Yeah. I mean, Lomax has got the highlights, but he's got some lowlights as well. It's a roller coaster ride with Zach Lomax. It's not a personal thing about him. Yeah. Good luck to him. He gets the $800,000. Good luck to him. But I just, I just need to hear... For the Dragons fans, mm. for the Dragons team, I am committed. I'm grateful for the Dragons letting me out early, but I am absolutely committed to the club for the entirety of 2024. And let's see what we can make of this squad we've got. We've had a mixed start. We've shown some very, very good things, and that's what I think he needs to do. Um, salary cap stumbling block in pursuit of Dragon. Zach Lomax, Michael Carianis, Brent Reed, right through the Daily Telegraph. Any club which signs Zach Lomax may be forced to carry his $800,000 value in their salary cap. Under general rules, okay, so where they're going here is that despite Lomax cutting ties with the Dragons, the value of the remaining two years of his current deal could be included. So even if he signed for less, say for five or 600 at what you say is a successful club to try and win a comp, the notional value may still go in the salary cap as the market value that he's getting paid, mm. which is $800,000. So it's problematic. Well, I don't understand this, though, because we're, we're, this 100% is going to happen with Tevita Pengai Jr. There's no way they're registering his contract at what he was getting at the Bulldogs. Uh, Jack Whiten went to, to South for way unders. I, I, I don't tend to agree with that story. I don't think it, it happens like that. It's supposed to in all, you know, if everything was fair, but I don't think that happens. Uh, I'll tell you one thing on the salary cap, which I vehemently disagree with. So Tavita Pangoa Jr., who you raised, I've got no doubt he's going to turn up in round 18. Yeah. So it's not about how many rounds you've played. Contracts start on the 1st of November, so it's prorated from then. So I haven't checked the date, but let's call it uh, two-thirds of the season or three-quarters of the season gone. If Tavita Pangai Jr.'s notional value is 800000 which mm. would be about the right. That's what he was on, yeah. Then if you just keep 200000 aside in your salary cap and you save that until that round 18, you can get on grand final day and in the semifinals yeah, an $800,000 player, yeah. which defies the whole idea of the yeah, salary yeah, cap yeah. in the first place. Well, if that $200,000 was worth $200,000 in round one, by the time you get to round 18, it should be worth $20,000, whatever that – the devaluation is across that same time period, right? Because that's what a player's salary would be devaluing by as it goes. So it should it should be reducing every round. That makes zero sense. But as a club, as a club, I would, I'd, I'd be leaving. So if you if you enter round one with two hundred thousand in the cap, mm. for me, when it comes to two thirds of the year gone, you shouldn't still have the two hundred thousand. That should diminish to say. 60,000 yeah. or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you can use the pro rider, but they're double yeah. dipping, and we're yeah, missing this weird. trick. We're missing this trick, I'm telling you now. Uh, Tyson Frizzell's out for the Knights. David Riccio, so he won't be playing his former club at McDonald Jones Stadium on Friday night. The Knights star forward has suffered a hamstring injury, and he's been sent for scans, which is a worry. The Knights coach, Adam O'Brien, is expected to add 18th man Dylan Lucas to his final that's a tough 17. Game to pick. Oh, that's a tough game. Footy tipping this year. Oof. Dollar, punting. Dollar, dollar punting forty odd for the Knights. Uh, no, thank you. What are you really gambling Way with? Way too short. Way too short. SEN League tonight, of course. Don't forget, SEN League have the first two games of each and every round. Uh, the Broncos take on the Storm from seven pm, and then uh, tomorrow night uh, you've got the Bulldogs take on the Roosters at Accor Stadium. Uh, Accor Swim Stadium, perhaps tomorrow. Straight after the run home <laughs> at five pm. After that's, the break, that's the run home cup. It is. Flesh first missile. Oh, it is. Yeah. It is. It is. Uh, speaking about that, Shawnee Omron's also a bulldog too. He's going to join us from Sportsbet for a market update right after this.